get your crucible teams all set because cosmic crucible may be a lot more important than we all initially thought we're getting more orange gear but is it enough we're talking about the real anniversary of marvel strike force data mines and a lot more in this edition of your marvel strike force weekly news update this week i'm joined by my brother dorky dad and if you're ready for it dorky dad tell him what to do my brother let's go smash it Hello, hello, hello. What is up, Valley Club? I am Valley Flying. Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel on this edition of your Marvel Strike Force weekly news update. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button. If you have already subscribed, welcome back to the channel. And if you're listening to this on the podcast version of this weekly news update, make sure you give it a five star review in whatever format you're listening to. But this week, I am joined by my brother, Dorky Dad, talking a lot about everything in Marvel Strike Force. So, since it's been a while since we've done a news update, Dorky Dad, how are you enjoying Marvel Strike Force right now, my brother? Uh, it feels very like status quo right now. Like there's not a lot of exciting stuff going on. And I think that's just a function of like tower and stuff like that. Just not happening right now, which wait, I, we're talking about. Wait, kind a of function good. of a function of what? I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about there. A function. I, th I heard you say tower, but I don't, I don't recognize that in Marvel strike force. What, what yeah. is this tower you're talking about? Maybe it was like a blurry haze, some kind of good dream I had at some point. I don't know. I, oh. I, I vaguely think of this mode that was like really creative, but maybe I imagined it. I, I you know what? We, we might be imagining the same thing. I'm, I'm imagining something with pockets and things like that, but I'm not sure because it's been so long. I, I don't even remember. We've been playing this game for a while, but uh, I, I think it's not a bad thing. That is kind of status quo now, kind of a break from the stress of this game. There's still stuff you have to do, your daily raids and things like that, but I, I'm, I'm liking this uh, little break. Now, we do have some milestones going on right now in the game and last month's milestones we got them double we got all the milestones for free because of a bug but to complete the milestones in the way we were supposed to by collecting all of the uh, mjolnir fragments well we weren't able to do that and complete the second set of milestones free to play this month the techno future this is the fourth iteration the first one second one we were able to complete the third one, sort of, because of the free milestones, but uh, what do you think is going to happen Techno Future? Do you think they're going to give us enough of these uh, shards here? I, I can't remember what they're called. They're called Relay Circuits. Do you think they're going to give us enough Relay Circuits to complete this free-to-play, or is it going to be like last month, or is it going to be bugged so that people that are able to participate in a bug can complete it, but everybody else that doesn't uh, get screwed? What are, what are your thoughts on what's going on with these Techno Future milestones this month? Okay, so I can almost guarantee you there'll be a bug at some point at the last store refresh of the day, if you're on the eastern side, uh, that if you're on it at that time, you'll probably be able to collect a little bit of these at some point during the month and get it done free to play. Besides that, I'd like to think that it's going to be free to play like Dazzler and Spider-Woman were, uh, and that the Mighty Thor one, that was sort something of, that they... Sort of, but sort of, but not really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I like to think the Mighty Thor one was just changed because of the way they gave it to everybody for free. Um, but it's scopely, so I just don't know. I It's so hard to tell. Do you think that they, that was a mistake and uh, we were supposed to get those extra Mjolnir fragments from... Uh, those events that were bugged and uh, everyone was supposed to get it free to play or do you think they did that on purpose because they gave one set of the milestones to everybody for free why do you think that we weren't able to complete the second set of milestones last month do you think that was on purpose or a bug oh that's a great question <laughs> malicious or stupidity for them it's so hard to tell um I'm going to you know what I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt which I shouldn't and say it was like a stupid uh, moment of bad math on their part and uh, hopefully that they got some better mathematicians in there now yeah I think I think uh, more often than not it's stupidity and not maliciousness from the devs at Scopely so uh, I don't know if that's the better thing or worst thing but uh, yeah. my guess I'm gonna say we're gonna be able to complete this this month what are what are you saying yes or no yeah I think we're only with bugs or only with bugs no, I, I think we're going to be able to complete it. Uh, I think that the second they start making these monthly events, 
uh, basically like another battle pass where you got to pay to do it every month. Uh, I think people are going to finally break because a lot of people are already kind of breaking. Yeah, I, I haven't bought one of those battle passes or strike passes for a while. Uh, last question before we move on. I, this is this is a lot more than I wanted to discuss about this. Uh, we were not able to complete a couple of those events last month during the uh, the Summer of Thunder events. And there was no offer to purchase the remaining fragments or what we need on the last day. Do you think that was on purpose or do you think that that was uh, because the events got extended and they never went back and looked at their dates? And do you think they're going to do the same thing, not make events completable by purchasing it on the last day? Is that is that kind of their intent? Were they trying to train us? It's like, oh, you got to purchase stuff. You got to have this FOMO or... Or, or what, was it was it just another mistake on their part? What do you what do you think about the uh, the non purchasable part? Is that another yeah, no. malicious or stupid error? <laughs> no, that that's straight up FOMO conditioning. They want you to feel like you got to buy it sooner rather than later, so you're buying the bigger packs that they kind of have in the middle of the event to cover your your area. Uh, so yeah, I, that's just straight FOMO conditioning, and I don't think they'll so ever that have that it. That one was they... malicious. That one was malicious, not stupid. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for sure. I hope. I hope. I hope you're wrong on that. You're probably right. I hope you're wrong on that, though. <laughs> All right. But we we have another event going on right now. This is this is kind of a uh, covering this because we we mm. weren't able to do the news last week. Victory Blueprint is going on right now, and this is one of these events that you need to spend war energy refills so trying to do those four refreshes per day spending cores in that blitz store so you could get all that uh war attack energy refills earning war credits were you able to save your uh, war credits this time were you able to save all three or did it get bugged for you in the store and where do you, did you claim stuff accidentally yeah i claimed one of them accidentally so i did get two out of the three uh but man does that ever feel bad that this is something we gotta be aware of all the time. It's just, it's so silly, this mail hoarding nonsense. What they well, what they need to do is, is just figure out a way to make that not a thing, because this is just bad. Well, I, I thought everybody didn't like that. I, I had a question about it in the uh, mailbag video this earlier this week. There are some people that actually like that. So devs, Scopely, do what everybody's been asking about this, open all rewards, put as an option on the advanced options so the people that like it can have it still be there. And for people like me and you and most of the community that doesn't like it, they can turn it off and go back to the old way of things. Um, yeah. any, anything different in this event for you? No. Is, it, is it pretty much the same as the previous Victory Blueprints? I Because I, I didn't notice anything different. Did you notice anything different about this event in the previous iterations? No, to me, it's it's pretty much the same. Uh, it always happens to fall on the week when we have wars against like Legion and Mutiny, so that it's harder for us to get those war credits. Uh, which they, is kind of annoying. They're doing for you on purpose. That's what. That's why they're scheduling those battles for yeah. you because they know victory blueprints going on. I think so. They know they know when to tax the whales and the dolphins the the, the most. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They're really good at that. So I think this is a, I, I, this is the kind of a monthly event now. You know, you got to hoard war credits. I hope yeah. the only thing that I do that I hope they do, like I said in the uh, if when this comes around again, is uh, be able to turn those uh, open all mill uh, uh, off in the advanced options so that uh, we can hoard for this event. And then if you want to, if you got a lot of these uh, web rewards that you just want to claim and you're not hoarding anything, you could just turn it on and claim all and it'd be super easy best of both worlds in my opinion for that yeah all right but we got some we got some good things incoming for marvel strike force we got some changes to the catalyst of uh, change challenges and all in all we're getting more parts we're getting six or seven eight more parts per attempt for spcs on tier 12 of these challenges we're getting four more parts per attempt on uh, these orange stat catalyst parts uh this doesn't equate to a lot per week considering how much we need per character Th is, is this, has this already made a big difference for you or have you not noticed this at all so not from just this in particular but they do seem to have kind of turned that faucet a little bit to open up the orange economy because so we have what was this 24 total on two, twice a week from this right uh, so there's 50 there and then from the daily streak, I think we're getting somewhere around 20 there uh, If you're completing the full streak and then there's actual orange orbs in the new doom raid as opposed to the purple orbs per node 
So it does feel like the orange economy is somewhat loosening, but not not enough to the point where like Purple Gear opened up and Purple Gear mostly opened up because of those blitz orbs that they released. Uh, so as soon as they do that, I think that's when like the, the switch kind of flicks. But I have noticed a, a steadier increase of SPCs, not enough to go buck wild with, but enough to be like, I'm more comfortable with new characters coming out kind of thing. Well, I, I'm hoping that this is just the beginning. As you, you mentioned, the uh, daily objectives that we're getting, we're getting 25 instead of 20. So five more per All day. Right, Seems go. like a drop in the bucket. And, you know, I've noticed that I'm not I'm not struggling as far as gold and training mats anymore. And I'm not sure what they've done. Is it from milestones or if it's from permanent events? But that hasn't been a real struggle for me. Is this just the start of what they're doing to ease up this orange economy? Because I was hoping once they introduced teal, we would get that uh, reduction of the orange uh, crunch as soon as possible. It looks like they're starting to do this. When do you think we're actually going to feel some of the effects of this? Or is this going to continue to be drops in the bucket? If you're still playing catch up, like if you're not a super veteran player, you're playing catch up on your roster. I think until that blitz orange origin orbs kind of up here i think you're always going to feel like you're playing from behind still mm -hmm. uh but if you're just keeping up with new characters i think within about three to four months you'll feel the relief now what might be the opposite though is <laughs> i don't know if you've noticed the new characters require a lot less sbcs right uh, uh, like, as far as orange or teal orange as far as orange you like new okay. characters like uh I have not, the I haven't noticed, but I, 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 I haven't looked either. So, <laughs> yeah. So, like, I think, like, if you look at Captain America, for whatever reason, he's one of the characters that, and I'm not sure if this is particularly him, who might cost 2,200 SBCs. Mm. And then you look at a character like Gambit, and he was more like 1,600. So okay. there was a difference there. So now, if they're making all the new characters kind of have that old SBC model to them, then it might not feel like any kind of change. So I guess we'll have to keep our eye out on that. Yeah, I'm hoping this is a bigger change than I'm feeling right now because I'm not really feeling this, but hopefully over time this adds up and can do that. And and like and and I didn't notice that change. I know there are certain characters like Iron Man, Nick Fury, some of these older characters that take a lot of uh, just gear to gear them up. So yeah, uh, I, I know some of the newer characters aren't uh, aren't taking as much of the unique pieces, but it's all it's good to hear that they're not taking as many catalysts as well. Now, there was a change to one of the orbs that we have in the store right now. This was a change to the orange elite orb, and they say it's an improvement. I want to get your thoughts on this. They said, so let me read this. There was a recent change to the raid store orange elite orb. Previously, unique gear items had a slight chance for a 5% drop or 5x drop in the left and right pillars. With the recent release of gear tier 17, the dev wants players to have more consistent access to uniques in this orb. So the right pillar now drops a unique gear at a 100% rate compared to before when players had a 20% chance of getting a unique piece. The experience is now more consistent. And I agree, as far as the unique pieces, it is more consistent and there's not a lot of change. But on those other 80% of chances, when we didn't get those unique pieces, we were getting catalysts. So yeah it's kind of a it's kind of a wash and a more uh, flattened experience as far as your uniques but as far as a catalyst this is a definite um reduction a definite nerf what is more important the, the extra catalyst being gone or that it's a more consistent experience now and i guess that's going to be determined with the uh with the if, if you think it's an upgrade or a nerf yeah it, i guess it's going to be a subjective thing to me this is it's a it's a side move. Uh, I like it better because it lets me. I don't I don't want to say plan out better because what you get is still RNG, but it allows me to be more confident when I'm gearing up vision. It's like oh well you know I'm I'm going to be under that sixty gamma radiation pieces now that I'm going to need to gear tier Hulk up to gear tier fifteen, but now that I know that I'm going to be getting ten uniques every single day no matter what from the Doom raid, it, I feel a little bit more secure in that sense and yes like you said the catalysts are less because that 80 percent chance you get catalysts however it like we were talking about earlier they seem to be kind of uh ratcheting up the orange economy a little bit especially from the doom three nodes and uh that's that's kind of what my head goes to for now anyway yeah hopefully hopefully i mean if there was some uh, agency over these uh, uniques that we're getting i think that would be an improvement but because it's still rng for me this is a nerf i like those catalysts i'm, I'm not struggling too much with these uh because normally i'm just saving these up i've been opening these uh, recently but normally i save these into the hundreds before i start to open them 
I, I'm missing the catalyst. Let me know your thoughts, though, because it, it is kind of a subjective thing what you need more. You want that consistency of those catalysts, it's an upgrade. If you want more, uh, excuse me, for the consistency of the uniques, it's an upgrade. If you want more catalysts, it's a slight uh, decrease. But hopefully with some of these other changes that they're implementing in the game, hopefully we don't feel that uh, that pain of missing those catalysts too much. All right. Yeah. So ho hopefully all that stuff happens. Hopefully we keep getting more... Um, stuff coming to the orange gear economy i couldn't think of a good give word me stuff. give me the stuff <laughs> yeah just settle with stuff because i couldn't think of a good word <laughs> anyway uh so that is the orange economy looking better for the most part and hopefully we'll start to feel some of that uh change very very soon we got some saga events the milf saga event is back and uh in my opinion you're the scourge expert my brother i followed your uh guides for all three scourges the first morgan lefay the first rogue and the second morgan lefay now we have the saga <laughs> how important is this right now is this something that players should rush for or wait for or does it really depend on how how much you're using rogue and milf in the same team because i think that's the only place that these awaken abilities really you're gonna see the difference in these awaken abilities when you have rogue or other horsemen on the field. What 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 is your opinion? Rush right now or wait until we're closer to apocalypse? So if your if your dark hole team is close enough that it just needs a little bit of investment to get over that hump and beat these nodes, I would say do it. Invest in it now. Not necessarily a three sorry, but just to get through it because that resources you get from the nodes. I took those and I immediately put them on my raid teams because my raid teams uh, needed a lot of love for this new raid. So yeah. it's kind of like, it is like a mini dark dimension, right? Like the nodes, they give a bunch of training materials, a bunch of gold, stuff like that. Uh, I think T4s as well. So I really enjoyed uh, that little resource bounty we got from that. So in that sense, yeah, go finish these as quickly as you can. But to your point, Rogue, I think getting the... 100% resistance and the immunity when enemy Morgan uses her special or when your Morgan uses her special. That's cool. Uh, I I demolish rogue Morgan Darkhold teams in, in arena. arena. In arena. Yeah. When when the, the empowered one though. Empowered yeah, yeah. rogue, she's still that extra resistance not not making a difference for you. Not doing okay. nothing. Cause she doesn't get the focus. So even even though she might resist you a little bit more. She doesn't get the kind of focus that Agatha gives to Morgan. Okay. So in arena, she's still not landing her special yeah. on my Wong or on, on whoever she tries to go against. So I'm not finding her terribly useful in that sense. I've been I've been kind of mixed on the on going for this. I, I wanted to build it up just because everybody else did. And, you know, my Scarlet Witch is almost there. But it's also like, you know, Rogue, uh, uh, excuse me, Apocalypse is not going to be here for a while. It's only benefiting horsemen. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so I haven't really waited, but I think you're right as far as the gear. Even if you're, even if the waken abilities aren't doing anything, and that's that was the perspective I'm looking at it from. All these abilities, all these T4 ability mats, the uh, gold armory 16 orbs. I think that is what I should really rush to get Scarlet Witch in there to finish this. So I, I like that. I like that. So I think I think I'm gonna rush right now because everything else is pretty much uh, done. There you go. All right. Biv Vision, the new yeah. character in the game. That yeah, she's. I guess you're liking her. How, how are you liking her? <laughs> oh my gosh, she was absolutely game changer for the Bionic Avengers. Okay. They're such a fun, amazing, powerful team right now. Everywhere, I'm. I'm booked nice. on them. It's great, and her in uh, particular. Wow. Yeah. And where have you used her? Just in raids, or have you used her on that Bionic Avengers in other game modes like Crucible or War? Yeah, in both Crucible and War, they punch up like 400k into Web Warriors on both oh. modes. Easy. Oh. They beat Marauders if the enemy doesn't have Emma there, which a lot of endgame alliances don't have Emma because they're using her on offense. Okay. They they smack around so many teams in War and on Crucible. They're, they hit so hard. It's so much fun playing with these guys. Nice, nice. Well, that, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Now, where do you, when we finally get Hulkbuster in the game, uh, what additional things will they be able to do uh do you think they'll be able to take out full marauders even with Mara uh, even with emma once hulkbuster's there are there some other war teams that you're expecting to counter with this team once we have hulkbuster what are what are your expectations for this team once they're fully in the game um so i think hulkbuster is just going to be the raid key 
because it's it's the fifth it's the fifth person that gives the bionic speed so that they do their they do they do like a power armor wombo combo on their first turn but that fifth member who i'm currently using is captain sam he's giving them speed out the gate and then they just crush so as far as like war and crucible i don't think hulkbuster is going to add much though i could be wrong i haven't dove into his kit too too much yet but for sure in raids he's so necessary because right now on node one i'm doing 3.4 and without him, Doctor Strange Heartless on Node One is just whoever he picks is gone, absolutely gone. Now, is this team, this Bionic Avengers, better than the Doom Kestrel, that that hybrid team that we've been working with so far as a four piece? Is that better right now, or is that five piece with Lady Deathstrike and all that better than the four piece Bionic Avengers? So it feels like the Bionic Avengers in their current state. They can't get through the openings on the nodes. Okay. So you, you still kind of default to your old Doom 2.3 team, at least to start. But then when you go into cleanup and they don't have to deal with a Doctor Strange Heartless special out the gate, then they're amazing. Okay. Uh, and what you what you could do and some people are doing is they're rolling the dice, putting Doom in the middle, and then hoping Strange goes for Doom. And if, and if that happens, then you roll over the node. Okay, okay. I, 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 I haven't been to the tech section yet. I can't get through the bios. <laughs> Oh, I, I can't get yeah. through bio like on a consistent basis I, I'm, I'm not entering tech and as you can see i don't have all the iso 8 for these characters to even enter the doom raids where we're at right now so i haven't tested them yet uh but there was a little controversy with Viv vision when she came or actually before she came to the game there was uh this thing right here this red star additional chance to pull her it showed up before she was even in a game and uh some people started opening red star orbs for her and uh, she was not actually in the red star orbs at that additional drop rate uh did yep. you open any red stars at this time or at the I, time that she was bugged when she was not actually in there no i opened when she was available early before they pulled her out Okay, so this is uh, this is not the first time this has happened. This is actually the anniversary of this happened, uh, yep. that this happened. If we look back, the last time this happened was with Maria Hill and her Red Star Orbs. If you look at the date though, August 11th, 2021. Today, as we're recording this, is August 11th, 2022, when they finally addressed this. This happened in late July though, and a lot of similarities. One more for you, brother. I don't know if you were aware of this. Two years ago, Emma Frost had an issue. And if we look at the date for that, August 6, 2020. So it's <laughs> like every August for the past three years, there's an issue with Red Stars. We have not had this issue before these three incidents. We have not had it outside of these three incidents. So it's probably going to happen next August. Do you think it's something in the code or it's just this, uh, this is Scopely's real anniversary. Maybe, is this when Scopely actually took over from Fox Next? I, I can't remember the timing of this. Is this is this the real anniversary for us? No, this is, see, look, I didn't tell you this before. It's my birthday today and oh, I blew out birthday. the candles. I blew up my candles and I said, red star bug, <laughs> mass compensation for everybody. Yes. Well, that's, that's the birthday gift that keeps on giving, not just to you, but the entire Marvel Strike Force community. That's um, now, have you gotten compensation or heard of people gotten, getting compensation? Because I have I have a story that uh, from this morning on chat. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I was opening and she wasn't there. I did pull a five red star vision. I still got my regular Red Star Orbs comped. I don't know if the elites have gone out yet, but I'm kind of holding my breath, hoping that I also get those back. Do you think that they will go out? Because they were very generous with this Emma issue, not yeah. very generous with this Maria Hill issue. What do you think they're going to do with Viv Vision and this exact same issue that happens every August? I think they're going to be generous because I added that into my wish when I blew my candles out. Oh, good, so, good. <laughs> yeah. No, I, Jeff, I think they will be. Yeah. Jeff is handling compensation, guys. No need to fear. There you go. Uh, I think everyone's going to get all their orbs back, like literally even elite orbs, except for six and sevens. I think they'll keep if you roll the six or a seven, I think they're going to make you keep that or refund what you got. And then they give you the orb. I think they did that at one point. I think uh, what they were saying on stream, some people did get compensated for those red star orbs. And I'm not sure if they're going to get their elites back. I hope they do. Uh, they were saying the, the compensation for this is you get to keep what you opened, 
whether it be Maybe. trash or something good you get to keep what you open they're just gonna refund you your red stars and i think from what i heard at least the people that got compensated it was not nearly as many red star orbs they got in their compensation as they opened during the day so I don't know if that's just an yeah. initial wave or if that was just a blanket thing to people that were opening orbs at the time, but I hope the numbers work out. I hope they fix it correctly and uh, whatever orbs you uh, open, you get compensated appropriately. Uh, maybe maybe they got to not be as worn out from their summer vacation. You know, these guys <laughs> take these summer vacations, have uh, all their frothies and their white claws and uh, just forget to do this. Should they have left her? I'm sorry. They come back hazy. Yeah, <laughs> they do, and they they don't uh, run these red star orbs right, and they they put this artwork up too often. Now, what do yeah. you think they should have done? Uh, a lot of the chat this morning was saying they should have just left it. They should have just left her in there, sent out a a uh, notification. Hey, you can't purchase her yet. There was an error that she went in there, but uh, she's gonna remain in there. So confidently continue to open your red star. Should they have done that or handle it like a they did? taking her out of the orbs, not letting anybody know, and then uh, just sending some compensation that hopefully is right. Wow. I mean, of course they should have left her in. It was such a bonehead thing to put. What does it hurt for people to get her red stars early, even if her offer is a day later? Yeah. It affects literally nothing except maybe some content creator videos go out that don't have shard openings, but have red star openings. And, and maybe people, I, I guess what they probably think is that if people open the red star orbs and they don't pull her, then they won't buy her offer. That's, that's true for a lot of people though. But the true is also on the flip side. If they get a good offer, they weren't gonna purchase, or if they get a good red star pull, they weren't gonna purchase her. I know a lot of people that like, oh, well, I got seven, I gotta purchase her now. I got six red stars or I got seven red stars. So yeah. And you know what? E even to the point I just made where it's like, if they didn't get her, then they're not gonna buy her. Well, what they did ensured that a lot of people didn't get her and they may not get the compensation in time. Now, you did mention about, you don't, you're do not you not sure if they'll get the elite orbs back in time. Uh, Archangel did give us a quote that we could share. The elite orb compensation will go out a little later. So okay. I, I guess a different day. And he specifically said before Viv Vision's increased drop rate goes away. Okay, so, so it's still here now as we're recording this. We usually don't get advance notice when it's uh, going, maybe maybe like a day when she's going away. We haven't got that in-game yeah. message yet. So uh, maybe they're just leaving her in. I, and I know they had another offer go up. I'm not sure if that was because of this Red Stars or they plan to do a second offer for her her shards. So um, yeah. hopefully hopefully this is uh, done correctly. Everybody's made whole with all this stuff. But you know, you know what really... Uh, Grinds my gears, Storky Dad. What's that, Peter? I can't use President Loki in the game still. Ah. <laughs> when have I, I, I got that costume? I was so happy. I was like, yes, Loki series. And it worked for a little bit. And then he went into that T pose mode where he does this <laughs> in the game and it freezes uh. the game. And it looks like a lot of other characters were doing that. And we checked on a lot of these characters. Taskmaster, Miss Marvel, Baron Mordo, Nico, Gamora's Requiem costume, Mr. Knight, Love and Thunder for Thor, Private Eye version of Misty Knight, and Ancient Pharaoh. And a lot of these costumes looked like they did get fixed, except for President Loki. Uh, for the characters that we had the costumes for, this is your screenshot here. Bishop is working. As we see the private eye version of Misty Knight still in the game. In the loading screen, we see the President Loki costume, but still in T-pose, uh, still in normal costume here. Valkyrie's costume is not affected. I tried some of the ones that they said were also affected, the Thor Love and Thunder. You said the end song for Phoenix was freezing the game for you. This one seemed to work for me. The Pharaoh is there, Requiem for Gamora is there, but still no President Loki. When is President Loki gonna be back in the game, dorky dad? I missed that guy. Well, you know, he's a sneaky one. He's a mischievous one. He's a tricky one. So you never know if he's ever going to get his costume back. It's, it's, I guess it's like those those game modes that we were trying to figure out if they ever were in the game or not in the beginning of this video. Some, something with the something with like a tower or pockets or I, I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, anyway, anyway, yeah. I hope we get President Loki back very soon. There was this blog post that they had about these roll, the Summer of Thunder milestones, all the issues with that, that they're gonna give it, a, give out the compensation for everybody. Everybody gonna get those milestones for free. Then they had this at the bottom. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna revisit this, and I wanna get your assessment of how they've done since this. Now, 
This went out on July 8th, so a little over a month ago. They wrote this. We strive to offer the best experience possible. We've fallen short of delivering that recently. The leadership team of the development, the leadership of the development team is currently auditing our process, working very quickly to address the links in the chain that have contributed to the number of recent problems. These issues are learning experiences for the team. And the change is being made to address the weak spots. Th this includes, but is not limited to, proof testing requirements for quality assurance, longer lead times, and more rigor around data implementation and development of additional tools to mitigate errors. How do you think, we are always endeavor to do better and raise the bar. How do you think they've done on this so far? How, how, what are what are you what are your assessment of these uh the bugs and everything have they been reduced are they about the same do you think they've been increased since they've made this statement well there was like a full day where any kind of fight you try to do would crash because of the costume stuff but it was only the one day so i guess you could kind of give it to them for that it's still a day of crashing is still trash but then you look at viv and and you, I, you see this improved quality assurance longer lead times more rigor around data uh, additional tools to mitigate error. You look at that Viv issue. Why did she go out a day early? And why was the response to randomly yank her without telling anybody, without giving, like if they needed to pull her, they could have at least said, hey, she's in there right now in 30 minutes, she's no longer gonna be in there. So, so instead of just yanking her out, leaving the picture up there, uh, th there's so much childish mistakes that get made that it's hard to look at this and be like, oh yeah, they're trying to improve. Because it's uh, very basic things. These basic things are, uh, they've been an issue in the game for so long. And and we were speculating on the on the, on the the uh, live stream this morning. It's probably because she was originally supposed to go out on the, the Friday. They changed mm -hmm. it. They pushed it back to Saturday. And they never removed the Red Star, uh, the, the visual yeah. image going live. And it seems like they do that a lot. I'm not sure what the heck is going on with the T-posing, why that has come back. It was gone and then it came back and it's gone and it comes back again. But see, I, don't, I, I, I feel there's not as many game breaking bugs. And uh, when that T-pose issue was there, it was fixed relatively quickly. It's still, their, their, their quality assurance is still very, Ooh. very bad. But I think it's, 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 it's gotten yeah. a little better since this. I just I just thought of something that that's been a pretty big error that uh -oh, is uh -oh. actually going to affect I, I you. I must have forgot about that. What what did I forget about? The the taunting bug error, where oh, the, the phantom buffs and everything is that no? Or is, is that a different one? Okay. No, so the, there's now issues where a taunt, especially with like Bishop in Crucible, where Bishop is taunting on spawn, uh -huh. right? Yeah. But it, instead of targeting Bishop, it forces you to target the enemy character that's in the middle, regardless of who uh -huh. that is which is an issue and causes crucible losses. It causes crucible wins when it shouldn't have. And also, I think that's part of what's affecting node five on the Pestilence skirt, uh, Saga event. Okay. Uh, when when Rogue taunts, sometimes you're not stuck behind Rogue, you're still hitting Shang-Chi, which makes the node infinitely easier. So mm -hmm. maybe if you can get on that before they were to fix that. But, but that taunt bug in particular and all the Phantom buffs like, it's hard to look Phantom at the buffs. I forgot about those. Those are yeah. those have been there for months. They've then done nothing. They've how many done times worse. Have we, how many times have we brought it up in the Envoy chat? Like oh, we're yeah. looking at it multiple times. I know I don't post too much. I brought it up two separate times, like two months apart. Yeah. Nothing, nothing's been done. And you, you guys bring up stuff way more than I do. You guys have brought up countless times. Still nothing done. So yeah, I, I take it back. The phantom buffs and stuff, they need to be fixed. The taunting bug that I wasn't even aware of, that needs to be fixed. It's a bad one. Yeah. Some some things I guess they're doing better, but yeah, they, they still suck with all this stuff. Yeah. Look, it, they're redeemable. I mean, the game's still fun, so it's just, they need to I clean it up. I wanted to play a different up. game because Scopely sucks, but this is my favorite game, despite Scopely. So yeah. <laughs> they're still doing a good, a good job and making it fun for me to play, even with all this stuff and the bad they do. Imagine how much more fun we would have if the game worked properly, though, Dorky Dad. I mean, yeah, if, if I we had you. Marvel Strike Force working properly for two months, what state would this community be in? In I awe. Know. I don't know. It would be crazy. It would be crazy. Yeah. All right. Doom 3 to raids. They've been out long enough now to get a full assessment of it. I think you said earlier that you're in Doom 3.5? 4. 4. 4. 3.4. My goodness. All right. How are you liking this raid compared to Doom 3? Have you guys figured out the difficulty? Is it still difficult for you? What are your, what are your thoughts on this raid, brother? Yeah. So 
until we hit Doom 3.4, I loved it. It was a lot of fun. Okay. There's some there's some kind of switch that gets flicked, man. At 3.4, all of a sudden, your skill, you're either killing too fast, and then you're screwed on the next node, or you're not killing fast enough, and then Carnage is killing you instantly. Ah. In the bi bio section, um, I'm so frustrated that they would throw all these, uh, all these raid characters, like Web Warriors, Deathpool, that they gave us to solve Doom uh, 2, they're using against us in Doom 3, like the first node of uh, Bio. It's Web Warriors. So I, I went in there one attempt and I got dodged eight times in a row and <laughs> I, I lost. And I know that I normally kill easily and walk away. I lost because Spider Woman and Punk literally just kept dodging. I think there's a T'Challa on that node. He ended up bleeding out and dying, and so did another character. So Spider or Scarlet Spider came in. Then there was three Web Warriors who I literally couldn't hit. Nothing I did would hit them. And then I died. And I was I was sitting there like, what just happened? And the next node, you have like Jubilee, another raid character, right. blinding every time. And Infinity, and it's just like, why Phoenix, did you? Phoenix is on that node. And then you got the Eternals on the next node. With, yeah. With the Black Oroma. Yeah, it's rough. It, or is it so, Infinity? Well, I don't know. It's, it's it's rough though. It's rough. Oh, it, it's very. But on the whole, I actually do like the raid. Uh, it, it seems like it makes more sense than Doom Two did when it first came out. Bionic Avengers, if they aren't the answer for tech, then this raid is scuffed. But I think they are the answer. Uh, and then Mutant is kind of a section that's up in the air right now. Um, we got to figure out what we can do with Mutant because Axemen, though they work. There's a couple characters you can sub in, like Rogue and Emma. Shout out to Jex for uh, putting me onto that. They can they can make it a little bit easier, but it still feels power crept. And as we climb up to 3.4, I shudder to think what 3.5 would be like using Axemen still there. So well, on the you, whole, it's good. You need you need a lot of ISO for that. What is that? ISO 4 or ISO 5 for difficulty 3.5 in Doom? Well, I think it's 4, but you putting four. ISO 4 on Iceman would not feel good. No. Yeah, hopefully hopefully we have the new horseman team out before you have to do that. So Yeah, well uh, I think the new horseman team is gonna be skilled, but yeah. Oh, I, I the rumors are towards mutants, so I guess it could go anyway. I don't I don't know what I would like more. Skilled or mutant <laughs> maybe probably mutants. I don't know. All right. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of these rewards though? The the rewards they seem to ramp up pretty good, especially at difficulty two, where at thirty percent you're getting a full orb per day. Uh yeah. Yeah, and I've, I've also heard that 3.3, some of the bonuses aren't going correctly to the characters. So 3.3 is actually easier than 3.2. In your experience, was that true? Uh, we only did 3.3 for one day. Um, uh, so I don't yeah, know. It's hard it, to it, tell it, if that's RNG or not, right? Yeah, and like my, my lane is a bunch of savage. It's like we're racing each other, coring to beat it. I think we beat it with like... 16 hours left we were done our side because we're just a bunch Jeez. of silly Jeez. people Jeez. Uh, so it, it was a blur 3.3 but i have heard the stats are different and uh if scopely if you're listening you need to leave the room that's good everybody get to 3.3 and stay there if it's easier there's better rewards do that <laughs> wait 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 the, the so you're saying that is correct they're not correct the stats are not correct I am not telling Scopely that the characters in Doom 3.3 are weaker than the characters in Doom 3.2. Okay, yes, because that would not be possible because of no. all their improved testing requirements, longer yes. lead times, all this stuff. I don't know how that could be possible. The NRBs be weaker and stuff like that. So that's just crazy talk. I don't know why I even brought that up. Forget I said that, Valley Club. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's go on and move to these uh, other characters that we've been working on. Or two characters that we've been uh, trying to work towards. One not in the game yet, in Apocalypse. The other that some players have, some players don't, in Dormammu. I asked just a mobile gamer yesterday. I'm going to ask you the same question. Who should people be going towards, building towards right now? Dormammu, Apocalypse, or if it's, if it's player by player, what are the cutoff points for when you should be going for Apocalypse or when you should be continuing to push for Doom or even Dormammu? People should be going for Dormammu. Dormammu right now, not Apocalypse and the Horsemen and Scourges, yeah. if they don't have him unlocked. There's definitely some overlap that'll help speed it up a bit, but for the most part, your Web Warriors, Bio, bring them up to gear tier 16 for the city section. Your Bionic Avengers, bring them up to gear tier 16 for the uh, global section. Your Eternals, yes, even though they're Mystic, bring them up for Cosmic. 
you'll have a couple overlaps that you can bring in. I believe like Doctor Strange Heartless might be cosmic. Uh, would you still do? Would you still do Kestrel in that Mystic section nowadays? No, no, I would no. not do Kestrel. No. Okay. Well, Kestrel, it depends. Kestrel's, it depends on Kestrel's skill. A tough, Kestrel's a tough one because of the raids. Yeah, it depends For on me. skill section. If we do get a skill raid team from Death, then, then no. Stop building her. Yeah, then stop building her. But if if not, then yeah, she's super crucial in that node, in that mode. So there's a lot of overlap, but I I think Dormammu opens a bunch of doors that are otherwise closed to you. Cosmic Crucible is such an important mode right now that if you can use him on offense to take out Darkhold, it'll make your life easier. Or if you can put him on defense to make your opponent's life more difficult, that's good. The challenges, he'll trivialize those. He is absolutely crucial in these Scourge events that we're getting. If there's yeah. a Cosmic or a Villain section, he's incredible. Yeah. In the raid, he he basically nullifies the entire Mystic raid section. You put him, Morgan Eternals, and Death Pool together, and you can hit Ooh. auto and walk through th even 3.4. All those characters, I still have a level 85. That's the only that's the only section that I can confidently say I can go in there anytime with those five and just walk through it Whoa. all the way to the boss. Full so, auto. Are you able to sim or just auto? Uh, I'll, I'll sim the first node and then I'll play oh. through the second and third. Wow, that's brave. All right, nice. No, you, you, when you, when you finish the first node, you'll go into the second node with all your cooldowns up because there's multiple men and death pools giving a bunch of energy, so okay. it works out well. Nice. And and also on, honestly, with apocalypse with the blue ISO that's attached to it, I think it's gonna take people. I initially thought like, oh, the second death saga is open, I'm also gonna unlock apocalypse. No. But it, yeah, exactly. If they continue this, Cosmic Crucible is where you get your like fifty freaking ISO blue once a week. If that's how it's gonna be, it's like, well, I'll get Apocalypse next year, kind well, of thing. Even, even even if you don't have the gear, I'm not expecting them to release it till mid 2023. The earliest the Apocalypse I think could come in here is December, because yeah. in September we're getting the next the next team for uh uh or in september we're getting red hulk october yeah. we're getting the whatever death's team is gonna be november we should get death which means the earliest we could see apocalypse is december but that's if they do if they run the death event november and then again in december they're probably gonna wait till january or february for that which is when apocalypse is probably gonna come out so we got time so we got yeah. time for apocalypse so it's I, I don't know if there's a super heavy need to rush for apocalypse right now i don't think so and in that time you're gonna get enough teal gear to bring probably both your raid teams that you can use to unlock dormammu and your horseman right. teams that you'll use to unlock apocalypse you'll get enough to bring both of those groups of teams up to gear tier 16 by then Good especially point. if you're doing doom 2.3 or doom 3. so i think dormammu is still like the go get him He's incredible. He's useful in everywhere. He's going to up your your competitive edge. He's going to make it easier for you to get certain currencies. He still might go to before Apocalypse for now. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that one. Uh, but I'm working towards my other, uh, towards Apocalypse. What, what would you prioritize your ISO 8 Blue 4 with right now? Darkhold, I know you mentioned Darkhold. Any other characters that you're building? Are any unlimited X-Men, any other characters that you would put that on at this point so i did morgan i did rogue i'm doing agatha after agatha i'll do gambit because those those four characters are so crucial in the modes that they're in cosmic crucible war uh, all that kind of places after that i might hold on to it for a little bit but i yeah i'll probably hold on to it actually and save it maybe for red hulk so i can do him right away maybe i'll do hulk because he's so funny and like you I'm a, I'm a Hulkamaniac for sure. Ooh, so yeah, I don't mind that. That's right. That's right. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely still keeping my ISO blue for them for now. But if my Alliance all of a sudden starts pushing for Doom 3.5, which is very possible, I'm, I'd be happy to make that switch. If it, if it costs me Apocalypse a couple extra months, but we start doing 3.5, I think that'd be better long term for my account anyway. Yeah, because so. then you're getting the gear tier 17 pieces as well. So yeah. that may not hurt you in long term if you're if you're pushing that hard. Yeah, exactly. All right. You seem to be the expert on Cosmic Crucible right now. So I want to I want to talk to you about some of your strategy you're using. I think I just uh lost this previous uh match up there. Yeah, we lost this one. What are you doing right now in Cosmic Crucible? Are you uh, focusing more on defense, more on offense? I know the video that I recorded with Mobile Gamer, he he's, he cited your video on the war defense or the Crucible defense a lot, and that's changed up his strategy. 
What are, what do you think is more important for Crucible? Strong defense, strong offense, or kind of a hybrid of both? It, it depends where you are and who you're facing. So I'm I'm facing like exclusively eight mil plus punch ups or super new baby krakens who I actually had a six mil punch down, but it was a baby kraken who had a seven red star Morgan, and I couldn't get through it. I just couldn't. He had a 1.2 million dark hold team unbuffed, and I'm just sitting here like, what am I gonna do with this? Um, so it, it depends who you are, who you're facing, but I would I still suggest that having at least one roadblock team and the only roadblock team is dark hold so okay. definitely having a version of dark hold on defense and maybe one other tricky team that people don't see very often like doom wakanda or uh z factor or sorry z what i call that weapon z kind of thing um so, next with zemo yeah exactly i should have okay. just said that that makes a lot more sense <laughs> 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 uh, and, and then after that, making sure you have the teams to fight for efficiency. Because a lot of these, I'm on the cusp of masters and I keep kind of kind of licking it and then falling down and licking it and falling down. And like, it all comes down to efficiency on the close matchups or it's a blowout if you don't clear a dark hold team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it, it, it's so tricky. Now, what are you, what are you using currently to counter Darkhold if your Darkhold is on defense? Because I've been using them. Uh, I've been saving like all my good teams for offense. If you look at my defense right now, it's pretty weak. Uh, and I've been trying to get full clears for everything. This last one, I just ran out of time. But this 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 is my defense. Yeah. What are you using if you if you see a Darkhold on defense? So my old go to was I'm being attacked by a fly. It's <laughs> ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, my old go-to was Spider Woman, Emma, Kestrel, Dormammu, Sharon Carter. And okay. the idea there was that Spider Woman has the 100% extra focus on her special. She can land that ability block on Morgan. Okay. That was true until they introduced six and seven Red Star Morgans. It kind of stayed true when six Red Star was a thing, but now that it's seven Red Star Morgans, my, cause I'm a dolphin, I'm not a Kraken. Yeah. My five Red Star Spider Woman, even as a skirmisher has zero chance of landing that ability block. Mm. So it's kind of, it's, oh, it's so annoying because I've given all my enemies the perfect team to crush my dark hold. My team that I was telling people to use that spider woman team yeah. has beaten me in three different crucible matchups <laughs> so far. And I failed because they have a seven red star Morgan, or I didn't even attempt it because they have a seven red star Morgan. So it's like, that, that's, that's my go-to team if if you're facing an appropriate Morgan, I guess, is the end result. So that's the, you got the content creator conundrum. Do you do you put out the good content for the entire community, put out good videos, or do you try to make your account good? And yeah, I, I, I like I, to put out the good videos rather than make my account good. That's, I feel like Red Skull in the Infinity uh, Saga. I'm literally like guiding people to a treasure that I can never possess. <laughs> and it's just like, I go, I lose a crucible and I go to bed like, oh, again. That's a double-edged sword to be a good content <laughs> creator, man. You give everybody advice and they start beating you, but that's kind of how it goes. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, I like that strategy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to use some of yours because uh, this, this all defense worked last week. Did very good with that, but this week, not very good. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go a little more uh, tricky, put something like Dark Hold and get some counter for that. All right, Jubilee was back this week. Now I know she's still like the only solution for the mutant raid section right now in the ax man. But other than that, is there any use for Jubilee anymore? Is she still worth building and pushing for these events and building your rare pimp tech and all that? In, uh, in every mode that's not named raid, they kind of suck, don't they? They do. They've lost a lot of value. They, they used to be yeah. good in all modes, and now they're not even that good in raids. They're just kind of the, the default solution. Yeah, like, I guess I guess because of the default, you should still go for her. Okay. Uh, it sucks to farm pimp. Yeah, it's it's such a lukewarm response. Like, I just don't know. There, it's not an exciting unlock. It's like a mandatory oh. one. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you still, you still kind of have to do it until we get... Uh, Maybe the mutant team on the horizon with the with the. Um, I think it'll be apocalypse. I think apocalypse plus a couple people will come in and dethrone astonishing. Oh my goodness, that's 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 no raid solution for mutant for so long. My goodness. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if I can wait that long. I don't. know, It's kind of like how we waited for the tech solution, right? Like a year and a half or so. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, we got another character became farmable. 
Ghost Spider went to the arena store last week. We've had Scarlet Spider go to the war store. You know, we're going to get another character. Who do you think is next? I, I hope Spider Punk. Spider Punk. Yeah. Well, he's already in the arena orb. And they, they put her... They, Ghost Spider totally just skipped that. So, unless they move him out of the orb to someone else, probably not going to be Punk. Did you just say Spider Punk is in the orb? Yeah, Punk is in the orb. In the I didn't orb. know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i need five shards on him to finish him off i didn't know that yeah, if you open some okay. orbs maybe you can get, get some good rng <laughs> yeah okay we'll go for that i didn't i didn't know that right. so okay not him then um who who came eternals, after webbers eternals. i know I, they mentioned eternals in the blog post cersei and icarus everybody in that blog post has been released except for the two eternals do you think it's gonna be them or they're gonna release sometime in the future in conjunction with each other yeah no i i think I think Eternals have, have got to come out then. Because after Eternals, it, we start getting discouraged teams, right? Or, or do we get to so. Dark Hunters? Oh, God, they're going to go to Dark Hunters first, aren't they? So useless. That wouldn't be bad. I want Young Avengers. I want Echo and Kate farmable. That's, that's yeah. what I need. Uh, honestly, I would be more excited for Kate and Echo uh, just because of how valuable they are in Cosmic Crucible. And because people will get him for Rogue. That'll be fantastic next time Kate she comes is, around. Kate is so good. My goodness. Oh, yeah. I was, before we got Doom 3, I was using her in the, the tech section. Yeah, tech okay. section. And she was she was better than every other solution. Better than T'Challa. Better than Ghost. Better than any other character I was using. And Kate is so good. All right. So All right. Uh, hopefully one of the Eternals. If you have predictions, let me know down in the comments. We also got some characters in the Red Star store Finally, it's been Finally. months and months and months since we've got. Now, we got notice of Nico Minoru of Phantom X. I know Madeline Pryor was there because I bought the third star for her. Nice. Uh, <laughs> is there any other characters that went into the store that weren't announced? Because I know Madeline was not announced. And I was like, oh, she's in the store. Have you, have you seen any other characters besides Nico, Phantom X, and Madeline in there? Well, I saw Spider Woman in there the other day, so she got in there at some point that I missed. But as you know, and people who've watched me on this show know, I miss these availability things all the time. Uh, it's not the I, most important part of the blog post, but it's yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> no, it, it's great. Look, I'm I'm hoping and praying somehow Mighty Thor makes it in by the War Scourge because I have one red star on my Mighty Thor, and I'm just. If I'm the Scourge guy, I can't make videos with a one red star. I won't be able to do the this high is, end content. This is inexcusable. I mean, I, we understand yeah. the character availability and them holding them back. They wanted to make money. This red star is store and holding them back from that. That is totally ridiculous. It used to be yeah. two weeks, not six months. It used to, it, there was a time it was two weeks to go and then they're right in the store. Now it's months and months and months. So they need, there's no excuse for them not being in this store. That is horrible. Right. Completely agree. That is, that Completely. is trash, Scopely. Do better. Do better quality assurance with your uh, testing of your dates for the Red Star Store editions. All right. Yeah. We got some, we got some uh, arguably exciting stuff coming. We got a vision of tomorrow where we're going to be open Iron Willed Orbs. Iron Willed Orbs from the Life Cycle event campaign. Vessel of Victory Milestone spending power cores. Rewards include Viv Vision gear. Shield okay. shards, adamantium arm, which is the big thing for the uh, the event going on for Deathlock. A five red star vision. Is this going to help you? Where's your vision right now? Is he? Is he? He's at five red. Oh, so this is just duplicates for you. Mine's also at five red. Yeah, that's uh, okay it looks, though. It looks like Did we're you... also getting yeah, it's duplicates. That's that's more uh, orbs that we could uh, test our RNG luck. There you we go. Also, we also getting a spend campaign energy. So if you're saving your uh, web store rewards after this current event is over for all this campaign energy spent, so start saving again because we have another one. Also winning blitz battle with the iron will trait. And uh, more info here. We got more blitzes. It looks like there's two two day blitzes it's repeating uh the two day blitzes are going to repeat twice so we're getting two of them four total days seven day milestone uh what is your reaction for this it does not look like it has viv vision shards just gear for her um what is what is your uh the hype level for this event you know events used to have hype but since this month-long milestone came it just seems like a recurring like okay it's this event that does coincide this is, and it's right. always like yeah so it, i i mean it, Cool. Five Red Star Vision, I think, is great for people. He hits super hard. 
Vivision gear, fun. The adamantium arm and relay circuits is kind of just blast. Like I got the monthly milestone we stuff. Need them. Yeah. Yeah. And then the more is where I get a little bit more excited is the orange gear. Like we were talking about earlier, it's the catalyst, the SVCs, mm -hmm. maybe a training orb, maybe some gold orbs. That's, that's all stuff that I'm more excited for. So it's kind of like cool. It, it's like, it's like, look at my cool. It's like that. That's what it's like. That's my, that's my excitement that's, level. That's your excited face. He's making excited yeah. face, Scopely. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I, I hope there's a lot of orange gear now that you mentioned. I didn't think about that. Uh, yeah, these, these, and you mentioned that these ex events used to be more exciting. They did when we would get better stuff. I mean, this, this is just pretty much stuff for the uh, milestones. So, eh. yeah. Also, okay. also when it wasn't just scheduled, like this, it's a scheduled monthly events now. It's like, okay, we know Victory of Blueprint is going to come. We know there's going to be a Blitz one. We know there's going to be a spend campaign and corners one. It's like we know we know the motion, so it's just kind of like, okay, yeah. Here it and is. Yeah, I think I think the first iteration of this was a little more exciting when we didn't know what was going to happen. Now that it's repeated, this is the fourth time now, and it's kind of in a cycle. It's not as exciting. So hopefully they can still change this up. Maybe not do a victory blueprint. Maybe do some other exciting events. It's uh, you know change it up every month. You could do that once an update. You, you have yeah. a man hour scope, but you can do that. <laughs> Give them creativity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, one more data mine, and I thought this was a good one. There was some uh, there was some mixed responses to this on uh, chat this morning. So this one looks like advanced options coming. It's an inactivity autoplay. So now you have autoplay activated when you're inactive in battle. And of course, this is a data mine, so we don't know when this is coming. We don't know if this is uh, still something that's planned. But these advanced options will trigger when you're inactive for 20 seconds in raids, arena, and in war. The new advanced options are now available. Combat inactivity in, uh, will trigger autoplay in raids after 20 seconds. And when triggering autoplay from raids, it's going to use only basic auto basic. Uh, 20 seconds in arena, that's going to go right to straight autoplay. And 20 seconds in war goes straight to autoplay. You got to go to advanced options to activate this, which I like because if you don't like this, you could turn this off. If you do like this, you could have this on. I wish they did that for that claim all button. What is your initial impression of this? It seems like an awful idea. Yeah, I thought uh, it was good, but Chad well, didn't like it either. I thought it was good because. I, so I'm I mean, making coffee. I'm making coffee in the morning. My son starts crying. I was doing my raid fights. I put it down. I go deal with my son. All of a sudden I come back. I now have a dead raid team and I have to full heal them just to do it again because I have this on. The only mode where I where I would look at this and be like, okay, that's dope, is arena. Because if I put my phone down in war and this triggers and then I lose my war fight, that team's gone. Yeah. And maybe maybe it was the most important, maybe it was A4's Doom. And I lost against Young Avengers and I made zero headway. So now it's like my alliance is now down in A4's Doom and we need to deal with this Young Avengers still. So So in war, I hate that idea. In raids, I hate the idea of having a heal team up because they started auto basicing because that was going to surely get the node down. In arena, fine because if if I put my phone down, I'm kind of giving up that yeah, arena attack yeah, anyway. You lose it anyway if you if you don't auto it right. So yeah, the only, I, to me, the, yeah. There's four modes here that we're talking about. We're talking about the Doom raid, the Greek raid, the arena, and the war. I think for arena and the Greek raids, this is awesome. I, I like yeah. it for war. Yeah. You could, like you said, you could totally screw up your whole war with this. If a team that's not doing anything, you can't quit out and save that team. They're just dead and they've made no headway. That is the wasted attack and your team is gone for that. So war, this could be very problematic. Same thing for doom raids or if you're in uh, Ultimus and that's the hardest, whatever the hardest non-Greek raid is for you, this could be an issue because they start going auto basic and you're facing the most challenging enemies. It could be a problem. I was thinking of back in the past, back in when I would start these Ultimus raids. I'm like, oh, I forgot to press stuff. And I was like, oh, I wish there was this button. There was a call for this button for so long. But I think now, I, and I wish, and I hope they could still do this. In the advanced options, choose one for Arena, choose one for War, yeah. and choose one for Raids. That would be, I think, the best of this. But uh, yeah, so some positives, some negatives, but it could be some very costly negatives with some slight upsides to the positives. Yeah, like I, I'm all for players having choice. That's great. But I can just hear the I can well here. I can see the Reddit posts in my head now. I cost my alliance a war because of autoplay. I get, I could just see it happening already. Well, the good thing about this is that you could turn this on and off. This is not yeah. like the, the claim all button that's causing so many problems now that is just on. You, you, you can toggle this on and off if it's causing problems for you. So I like that they're uh, that they have that in the beginning. 
So yeah, I hope uh, we'll see how it happens though. It could be very bad for some people. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> All right. And that is it, my brother. That is the news. Um, yeah, final thoughts. We've covered a lot. What are, you, what are you most excited for coming up? Some of these more scourges, some more raid content, some more gear coming. Uh, what 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 did you uh, what are you what are you looking most forward to in Marvel Strike Force now? Right now, I'm very much looking forward to Scourge. Uh, the War Scourge is going to be a lot of fun, I think. But like I said, I'm I'm also very anxiety filled because of my Mighty Thor. Uh, besides that, like I'm really kind of like waiting with like held breath for a tower because I think there's been so many cool teams that have been released since the last tower that their their roster they can pick from to make fun interesting challenges has gone through the roof so i'm, I'm hoping we finally get that mode back soon quick question i know we we're joking about it before but why do you think they haven't brought back tower pocket we've had two of those this whole year I, we've had two towers two pockets that's it yeah i think they want to make uh scourge as important as possible and they didn't want a mode like tower or pocket dimension to take away from it giving too many uh, resources to build up our scourge and other teams yeah, to, to make it yeah. easier. Same with uh, uh, Cosmic Crucible. I think they put a lot of effort into that. It's a fly I don't know. No, I don't know if you heard that. It sounds like a pipe just went nuts. Uh, uh oh, all right. I, um, I digress. Yeah, uh, they're putting the resources into other things where I think a lot of the community would prefer to have more fun challenges back as opposed to just you know, monthly event, Scourge. Monthly event, Scourge. Yeah, the Crucible was is dope, but it's, I'm not gonna I'm say like it's it. stale. Yeah, I'm not gonna say it's stale, but it's it's missing uh, that PVE that Tower brings, I think, or Pocket Dimension brings. Mm, yeah. Or, just, or that lump sum resources that Pocket Dimension brings that everybody point. wants. Give us the best yeah. of both. Give us, yeah. give us the Pocket, the Tower, Scourge, Crucible, give us all of it. And then, um, I don't know. They got to take time away from somewhere. No more blitz events. No more. No more of these uh, grindy events. And then just just make it have a based around tower and pocket and skirt. All all these all these fun game modes. That's what I would want. All right. Yeah. Um. That is it. Dorky Dad. Let everybody know where they can find you, my brother. Hey, you guys can find me on Twitch at Twitch. Dot com slash Dorky underscore Dad or at uh, YouTube dot c slash just youtube turkey dad i'm right there guys come find me if you don't want to type it out guys the links are going to be down below it's much easier just click on the link go to his channel give him a subscribe go yeah. to his twitch uh get it give him a subscribe give him a follow and check out his streams because he puts a lot of content and it's helping me personal a lot so shout out to you fist bump for you thank you guys once again if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you hit subscribe leave it a five-star review and i'll see you guys next time hulk fist bump Valley planet, dorky dad out have a great week guys